Hello everyone and welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. Now today I'm really excited. We are going to start a basic tutorial for Crusader Kings 3, the amazing game by Paradox. Uh, this is one of the great grand strategy games ever made. Uh, if you've played other Paradox games, you know, it's along that similar vein but this, I believe, eclipses them all. Now, it is a deep game. It's a complex game. There's a lot that goes into it, but it is an understandable game when you break it down to its component parts, and that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to start right at the beginning here at the uh, opening screen, the new game screen, and we are going to build from there so that you understand the game. Now, I'm going to try to break these up into like 30-minute episodes so you're not feeling like you have to sit there and, and watch, you know, six straight hours of something. You can do it in 30-minute chunks, or you can put a couple of them together if you want. Uh, the main point being, you know, there are sections, and we're going to do this in sections. We're going to start off looking at the map and our realm and your options when you start the game. Uh, we'll be looking at our character. Now, this is going to be our character. This is the Petty King, Mershad MacDonald. Uh, we'll look at that in a second. Um, he is based in Ireland, and he, as I said, is a petty king, and we'll talk about that, what that means. Um, this is his son, Brian, and their family name, their family last name, is Brian. So this is Brian, Brian, <laughs> who's, uh, he's a very mediocre lad. Uh, we'll just say that. Our character uh, specializes in warfare, and that's about it. Um, but let's start right here at the beginning and say, what do we got here? Well, obviously, if you got a game saved, you can continue it or load it. Uh, we will be playing a new game. Now, our character is the tutorial character, so the game actually has a pretty good tutorial. That being said, you know, it's, t it, it's surface, right? You know, they, they kind of hit on the main points, but it doesn't go any deeper than that. Um, and we are going to go much deeper into every topic so that you understand the game. Now, what's unique about this game is you create your own game in a way. Can you quote unquote win the game? Sure you can. Uh, there's a score called Renown and you can build that and make yourself the greatest house. This is the house of Brian. You could make this the greatest house in all of the world. Uh, you're on the tip of everyone's tongue. You escape their lips at every moment. Um, but you don't have to do that. You can also decide that you want your family to be the most beautiful family in the world. And you can go look for that trait. You can make sure that every marriage down the line keeps trying to breed your line into more beautiful characters, okay? So you can do anything. You know, if you want to be fearful, you want people to dread you, and you scare the bejesus out of everyone, you can do that too. Um, but what's great about this game is you're not playing a character, you're playing a family. Now, we start with this guy. We'll most likely play his son next, and most likely play his grandson after that. But once the game gets going, you never quite know. Brian may never have children, or Brian may never have a boy, and we would play his daughter, who got married off to the king of England, or to, you know, the king of France, or a Dutch duchy lord in Normandy, and off we go. And you, you just, you're trying to build your family into something amazing. The only way that you can really, again, quote unquote, lose the game, because there's not winning and losing per se, uh, but the only way that you could lose the game is if you get to a point and you do not have an heir. So you have no one in your family to take over your titles and your titles go to another family. That's it. You know, the whole point of this game is building out a family. Once your family has nothing left or does not exist, well, that is game over. Now, before we get off the screen, I want to point out a couple of things, and that is this encyclopedia here. 
um, and the settings here. Now, I do not like to go all the way through the settings right at the start. The reason being is you don't know what the heck I'm talking about, and oftentimes settings can be very important. Now, graphics, audio, uh, th this is all personal preference, right? You do what you need to do there. When it comes to the game, um, you've got tool tips, things like that. So these are all just the basics. You know, it's not, uh, you know, you're not getting into rules and, you know, how, how the game operates. These are just uh, basic settings. So, you know, mess around with those how you will. Uh, but, but let's get to the encyclopedia here. Now, this game is absolutely amazing how good the encyclopedia and the tooltips are. And every tooltip, if you look in the right-hand corner there, it will lock. There we go. It's now locked. And you can go on to other tooltips literally till the end of time. You could go to a rabbit hole all the way to the other side of the world with this uh, because it's just tooltip off tooltip. But if there is anything that you want to know in this game, come type it in. Uh, abandon celibacy. Hey, uh, we're all for that. Um, you know, I wouldn't type this into Google, but feel free to type it into this encyclopedia if it's not right up here, and you will find out all about that. I guess there is a celibate trait. Hmm, interesting. Okay, well, that's probably not going to increase your lineage. Um, but there's all kinds, you know, abduction scheme, absolute control, blah, 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 blah. It goes on and on. This is all in alphabetical order. It's also divided up over here. You can search for it here. Uh, and once you get onto a tooltip, you can keep going down the tooltips. Uh, and, you know, it's an amazing system. It's not only the best I've ever seen in a game. I would go so far as, as to say it's the best I've ever seen in a piece of software. So the, whoever did this system needs to be hired at Microsoft or Salesforce. It would make all of our jobs a lot easier. Okay, so those were kind of the main things I wanted to point out on this screen. Let's get into a new game. Now, once you pop up new game, uh, I've had people ask me, are these DLCs? Are these different scenarios? No, they're, they're merely suggestions. You have two choices at the start. What year you want to start in? 867 or 1066. Now, 867... The Carolingians, this is when Charlemagne's empire started to break up. These guys are all fighting over it. These princes and carlings and whatever the heck else we got out here, they're all trying to uh, fight over Charlemagne's old realm. So these guys are suggested. You do not have to play any of these people. You could play some of these people. Here are other suggestions. These people are known as great, uh, what was it, adventurers maybe. Is that adventures? I don't know. Uh, yes, the great adventures. Um, here we have Vikings, essentially, the, the Norsemen. And if you've watched the show Vikings or you watch the show The Last Kingdom, a lot of these names will be familiar to you, and you can play those characters if you want. But you don't have to play any of these suggestions. They, they are merely that, suggestions. Same with 1066. Um, now, you know, to pick your year, you're going to have to, you know, kind of, Pick one or the other, right? One of these three planes of ga gla <laughs> gas, three panes of glass, or one of these three. Uh, 1066, this is when William the Bastard, the B word, comes across the English Channel, takes over England uh, from King Harold, the Anglo Saxon. The Normans win this battle, the Battle of Hastings, and uh, William the Bastard becomes William the Conqueror because he now gets to write history. That's why 1066 is an important date. So you can play any of these characters, any of these um, Spanish char characters, the Iberian Peninsula. Uh, these are the gentleman and one lady fighting over what would become Spain. Uh, rags to riches, you know, here's some people that maybe are underdogs in the game, uh, but can go on to great things, including our character here, the Petty King Mershad. Now, I said we're playing the Petty King Mershad. Um, 
he again is also the tutorial character and you may say well why are we playing the tutorial character because i want you to be able to watch one of these episodes and then go essentially practice with him right and say oh we talked about this in this episode you know i can go to the tutorial and mess around like i said the the tutorial is pretty pretty decent you know it's not it's not bad let's put it that way um Okay, now let's say that you want to start in 1066. So we've clicked on this. We're you know, in the 1066 choices, but you don't want to play any of the people in the three suggestion boxes here. Okay, that's fine. We can click right down here to the left on that ribbon, and we can go and play anyone on this stunning map. And man, oh man, is this map something. If you're a map hound, it doesn't get any more beautiful than this. And as you see, uh, this is something new for CK3. They put it on a table here. It's like a parchment map. Now, uh, when it comes to the map, WASD, the keys, you can move around WASD if you want to do it that way. Um, or you can push out to the sides up or down okay and if you want to zoom in so we're at the furthest zoom out right now the mouse wheel will zoom you in uh, i haven't done it on the keyboard i'm going to guess it's plus and minus no it's not i don't know i don't know if there's a key tip i just always do it with the mouse wheel you probably will too it's 2020 you know get a mouse with a mouse wheel um so you'll see this is go going to be our little kingdom here. He is the petty king of Munster, and this is the petty kingdom of Munster. But let's scoot back out here. Let's say that you're Hungarian, or you like Hungarians, or you're just interested in Hungary in general. You can come down here, and well, it looks like Hungary has been turned into a kingdom. But you could play the king of Hungary. And that is King Salomon. Okay, cool. Um, he also has some dukes out here. Uh, they're called princes in Hungary, evidently. This is, you know, the shield size for a duke or a petty king, as we are. But out here, it seems they're called princes. It's the Duchy of Transylvania. Oh, well, that's cool. I did that just completely on accident. But we may have Dracula out here. Um, you could play this guy, Prince Laszlo. Okay, that's cool. So we've got a king we could play. We've got the equivalent of a duke, he's called a prince, um, that we could play. Or see this little smaller shield here? This is a gentleman that just has a county or two, um, and he's a count. Imagine that, right? He is a count who is in control of the county of Fahir. Um, and you could play this guy. You can play all the way down to the county level. And that brings up the next point, which is this game is completely based on counties. Um, but we'll get to that in a second because I want to finish this. You could pick anyone, you know, come out here. You can pick someone in China. If you uh, want to pick a certain place in China, you could pick someone in Saudi Arabia out here. So there, there's Saudi Arabia. Uh, you could pick someone in India. Now, these people are all going to have different religions. You see here, here's a different religion. I don't, it's, oh, it's Hindu. Okay. It's a certain kind of Hinduism. I mean, this game gets way down into the weeds on this kind of stuff, right? Uh, this is unreformed Tibetan faith. Uh, okay. Um, but every one of these characters is playable down to the county level, down to count or an earl. In, in Ireland, we call them earls. Uh, in you know many parts of Europe, they call them counts. Let's just go see for fun what they call them in China, because I don't want you to be confused by this. Um, this is a chieftain, okay? So I assume he's yeah, he's the chieftain. Uh, that's the same as an earl in Ireland. Now this looks to be, and we can find out, the khanate, okay? This is the same as being a king. 
in Europe. Uh, this is the next rank down, you know, so this is like the intermediate rank. And out here, these guys are called Dukes. Oh, wow. Okay. I would not not have expected that, but they are called Dukes out here. As you can see, he is part a, of a much larger kingdom. But we'll get into all of those relationships uh, in a moment, right? So you can play any of these people, and you select on them. Uh, and hit play, and off you go. You could pick a random character if you wanted to. You don't even have to play at all. You can just observe the game if you wish. Or one thing that's come up that is really, really cool that they're doing now is let's say that you have an affinity for Poland, but you don't like King Bolslaw the second, the bold of Poland. Uh, he's got a great name to end up, you know, that, that just comes natural to call him the bold if he's uh, old Bolslaw the second. But if you don't like this guy, you don't like his traits, you don't like his stats, uh, you can create your own. And you click down here, create your own ruler. You have so many points. You can make them look however you want. There's been quite a game uh, afoot on, um, <laughs> on Twitter and whatnot to make the uh, ugliest character possible. Uh, and there, believe me, some people have succeeded at that. So if, you know, you can completely go ahistorical and make yourself the king of Poland and you start playing Poland and make it look like you if you want or make it look like, uh, I don't know, your, your sixth grade math teacher. It just doesn't matter. You can uh, do whatever you want and install your own ruler. And you can do that again in 867 or 1066. Those two dates are fixed. You have to start at one or the other. Now you see down here, before we talked about settings, uh, the game rules, we're not going to really go into these until later, uh, because again, you really won't know what I'm talking about if we go into those right now. But let's go over here and pick our character. Petty King Merchad Mac Donchad, and this is why I said I think he's MacDonald of Munster. He's 39. He is temperate, wrathful, and impatient. Okay, that could be an interesting character. Uh, he is the Petty King of Munster. This is feudal, and we'll go through the different map modes and what that might mean uh, eventually. It's not super important right at the start, um, but we're going to pick him. You'll also see he is House Brian. This is our house shield, by the way, uh, but let's hit play. Okay, and we're off, and looky there. We go right to what here in blue is called your realm, right? This is your realm. So let's just kind of go around the screen and talk about everything that is here. Of course, we have our character here. You can always left click on him or you can hit F1. And that brings up your character screen that you're playing at this moment. As I said before, you will not be playing him the entire game. As a matter of fact, you may not even remember playing him once we get eight or 10 you know, rungs down the ladder. Uh, you are also not playing Munster, which is our realm here. Instead, you are playing his family or the family that he is part of and will pass down through the ages. And that is House Brian. That will always be right here. You can pull it up. It says House Brian. Our saying is by wisdom and virtue. Sounds very nice. Um, and here, you know, it says house and you can read what a house is. If you're not sure, your house. It comes out a, of a certain dynasty. Uh, you know, you're playing the house. Uh, level of Splendor, we'll get into all of these things. But it's F1, or if you want to get out of this, just hit Escape, and you're back here. Uh, and so whatever character you're currently playing will be right down here to the left. Also, I will point out, you can interact with any character in the game that's still alive. Now, unfortunately, our grandmother and our grandfather have passed away. You see them grayed out here. You also see that our grandfather was the king of Ireland. 
that gives you, you know, some interesting information. But any of these characters that are lit up here, now we did have a sister, a half-sister who passed away. Um, this is our son, Brian. He's a, if you look up here, your son and player heir. He's a bold lackey. That's the general description of Brian. And Brian is unmarried. Um, this is our half-brother, Conchabar and another half brother now we will get all into our character next episode i just want to kind of point out to you where certain things are oh the point of this was if you want to interact with any character in the game roll over the character and right click and this brings up all of the different interactions you could have with that character and when i say any character in the game i mean you know let's go out here to poland we saw this king here king bullishaw he comes up when we click on Poland. Let's right click. He's too far away to interact with, so we can't interact with him. Uh, how about the King of France, King Philippe? We can interact with King Philippe. We could try to murder King Philippe. Now, that might not be a very good idea because, uh, you know, France looks a little bit bigger than Munster. So we might not want to go down that road. But the point is, you can interact with anyone that's close enough. Now, Poland was a bad example, right? Because, I mean, he would say, who? I have no, you know, we're talking about the year 1066, right? This guy has no clue who's a petty king in Ireland. I guarantee you that. Uh, the s same could definitely be said for a con out here. Uh, yep, he's too far away. But most players in the game that are somewhere close to you, you can interact with them. And we'll get into all of those interactions in their own episode. Okay, so we have our character. We have right here his main title. So if we go back to the character, he has titles. And you will always see displayed the main title of your character and the petty kingdom of Munster, which is duchy realm is his main title so that will always be displayed here you've got the little crown saying that you are the petty king now this will be his lifestyle choice we will talk about that when we talk about the character this is his level of stress this is his house shield this is his faith now you'll see insular christianity Okay, now this will allow us to get down into a map mode. Let's go look at different faiths around the map. And if we do that and zoom out, you'll see that almost all of Europe is Catholic. Of course, by 1066, you have uh, the Muslim faith has moved into Northern Africa and Southern Spain right? Um, but most all of Europe is Catholic, but we are not. We're insular Christian. So we are Christian, but it's a different kind of faith. And that's something we'll really have to keep in mind. Now you'll notice here that Catholicism has arrived in Ireland. And not only that, this is crosshatched. You know why? Because that's our county. We own that. Um, and yet it has you know, it's a different religion. Oh, that's not true. We do not own this one. Um, but I believe this guy is Catholic. Hold on. Hold on now. Let's go to Ormond. Yes, he is Catholic. And you can see that here. But we'll get all into that in religion. I'm just saying that this adds quite a twist to things that one of our vassals is Catholic and we have Catholics here. But we are insular. And that's what this is here. This is our culture. We are Irish. Oh, and so this was the map mode. This was, uh, you know, faith cultures. So we can see here we are part of the Irish culture, and that will matter. We'll come back to that at some point. Um, you can see houses. Okay, we can always see what our house controls. Now, this may be different than what our character controls because we may have six or seven kids, and they may end up in control of some other realms uh, but these are the map modes right down here now usually you would play on realm which shows the realms that are actually controlled and and you know who controls them and how much they control okay so that's what all of this is down here now these are our decisions 
that are major decisions, decisions we need to make right now. It tells us we have not chosen a lifestyle, which we knew. Um, it tells us that our heir is unmarried. Now we talked about that. Brian is not married and we'll have to get Brian married off to, to someone, poor lady. Um, and then it says we're not married. Well, that's not good. Uh, we need to have heirs. Now we do have Brian, but the more the merrier, you know, if Brian has some kind of problem, uh, passes away, gets killed in battle, you know, dies of the pox or something, we need to have more sons. Uh, we need more heirs. So these are decisions the game is telling you, you need to deal with those immediately. This pain is telling you, here are kind of all of the decisions that you could make right now, uh, you know, or things that you may want to deal with, not endorsed by your bishop, you have too few spouses, you can declare wars, uh, you have other family members that can get married. So this is just kind of your general, hey, here are some decisions. These are, you know, come up here and deal with these right away. And we will be as we start the game. Now, here you have gold. So these three, gold, prestige, piety, are all individual to the character you're playing right now. And it shows you the total and how it arrives. Oh, it shows you the total. It shows you the monthly increase or decrease. And it shows you exactly how it gets there. And we'll get into all of that. Prestige is like a currency in this game. You can spin prestige, you can gather prestige, you can, you know, get it, you can spend it. it it's very much like gold, just used for different things. And we will get into those, uh, but you see your total, how much you're gaining a month, and the level that you're on for prestige. And we'll talk about that when we talk about prestige. Uh, the exact same thing for piety. Piety, of course, is going to relate to religious matters. Um, you may have some dealings with your bishops. Eventually, you may have dealings with a pope or some other religion's head. Um, and this piety could help you deal with those situations. You can spend it like currency to get certain advantages, maybe certain buffs, certain other things that you want to do. So piety, prestige, gold are all things that you can spend to make certain things happen that you want to happen. The tree here, this is renown. Now I said these three are individual to your character. This renown is your house. So, you know, when, when our petty King Marshad passes away and the titles all go to Brian, well, hopefully all go to Brian, we'll see. Um, this goes along with Brian or whatever character you're playing because this stat goes with your family and is really the stat that if in a traditional sense you would think about is the score of the game. So you can see how you're doing you know, right now our house is insignificant. We're trying to make it noteworthy. Uh, this here is how many soldiers that you could raise, and we will have a whole episode on the military. This here tells you your domain, your own domain, what you hold personally. Uh, you are given a limit. We can only have five holdings right now. That can be increased based on what we do. But right now we could only hold five things, but that's okay because we only have one thing. Now you may say, how is that? I saw that we have a couple of counties in our realm. We'll get to that in the next episode. Um, now, speaking of your realm, that's what this button is. It will tell you everything you need to know about your realm, your domain, which we just saw here, vassals, your secession laws, your crown authority, all of these things are very important and we will spend time on those. The next button down is military um, and we will go into all of that. Then you have your council, which will often be your powerful vassals or other people at court that have very specialized skills. Um, speaking of your court, 
This is everyone who is at your court. Uh, you do need a court physician, it looks like, and we'll deal with that. Um, but this, you can go here and look for any person in your court uh, that's there. You may have prisoners. You can also see those as well. Now, I should go back up here. So we said realm. You could look at domain, vassal, secession. Military, you can look at your armies, mercenaries, or holy orders. Council, that's just council, uh, but very important. Um, your court. You can invite knights, you can invite claimants, uh, your court and prisoners. Then we go on to intrigue, so schemes that maybe you're running. Now, schemes do not have to be negative, uh, but they could be. Or they could just, you know, you're trying to sway someone to see things your way. You can also learn secrets and get hooks on people. When you get hooks on someone, you uh, have a much easier time of persuading them into doing what you want them to do. Uh, any factions that are in your territory would be shown here. And e any major decisions or more minor decisions uh, are here under this quilt. So finally for this episode and our trip around uh, the playing screen, you will see are map filters and you know generally you're going to play on realms but you can also see duchies you can see kingdoms you can see empires now i will tell you the empire of britannia does not exist but what this is showing you is an aspirational title that maybe you or your grandson or your great 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 grandson may hold someday um now there are duchies, as a matter of fact, we control the duchy of Munster. Not all of it, but two thirds of it. We'll get into that next time. Um, but back to your realm, I already showed you faiths, cultures, houses. Uh, there are a few more governments, developments, terrain, okay? And then finally counties. And as I said, counties are the most important part of the game. Uh, next time we're going to talk about realms and we'll really get into counties because counties and their constituent parts here, which are baronies, never change. Uh, so now there's nothing in this barony, so, but in our county here, we have four baronies. This county and these four baronies will always exist. Uh, they are the kind of transmutable parts of the map. This will always be Thomond County, and someone will always control it because they will always control this castle. At this point, that is us. But we'll get into that when we talk about our realm. Um, the final things I wanted to show you are down here, and that is if you want to find any character in the game, find any title, find any lineage, or go to your capital. Let's go to our capital. It just it'll, would take us right here. You can do that there. You have the in-game menu, of course, if you want to get out of the game or load up a different game. Here is that encyclopedia I showed you before. Um, and so you can always find it here. Make liberal use of that. If you do not understand something, this game will explain it to you. Now, as you see down here, here is our starting date the 15th of September, 1066 AD. We are currently paused, uh, but the minute we hit play, time will begin marching on. And I love these kind of games, real time, pausable. It's like uh, a turn-based game or a real time strategy game, whichever one you want or a combination of the two. So it's really up to you. You can play this game essentially turn-based by pausing all of the time or you could turn up the speed and here's the speed so this is slowest slow normal fast and fastest you can pick your speed and if you have this at fastest this is essentially a real-time strategy game if you have it to slowest and you hit pause a lot which you can do you know there you go pause if you do that it's, you can play this like it's a turn-based game. It's the best of both worlds. It is how you, you know, however you want to play the game. So when we come back next time, we're going to talk about our realm and the map and these counties and what they all mean. After that, we'll get into our character.
okay? And then we're just going to go straight down here. We're going to talk about military items. We're going to talk about the council. We're going to talk about your court. Uh, we'll get married. We'll get Brian married, most importantly, maybe, because, uh, you know, who knows who wants Brian? We'll talk about how all of these things are calculated. Um, and we'll, you know, it's going to be a lot of fun looking at our character, our character traits, where those come from, and what they mean. So this has been a blast. I can't wait to make this full tutorial. Uh, it's one of my favorite games of all time, even though it's just come out a few months ago. It is a fantastic game. And if you'll put in a, just a little bit of time and watch these videos, uh, you'll learn the basis of the game and you can have all the fun you ever want. Uh, playing this one, write your own stories. Uh, so for Strategy Gaming Dojo, you know, if you enjoyed this, give me a like, uh, give me a subscribe. I always appreciate it, but I'll talk to you next time.